other night I went out in the hall in Scott. Perfect. Went like a bird. Not very far, about five or ten miles. And I went to this car meeting and it was going lovely. And then we got to the car meeting and some young kid said to me, can you start it up? I'd like to hear it go. So I started it up, looked at the old pressure gauge, nothing. Oh dear, drama. But luckily there was a person there who literally lived just round the corner. So I drove the car very gently, very, very, very gently, and, um, and um, left the car there overnight. And then the next day, me and John, on the Monday, went and picked it up in the old van. And um, so, you know, so there we are. So now we're going to get it out of the van and we're going to see why it's got no oil pressure. And, um, well, we'll just see how it goes. But you might be interested to see us getting out of the van because we ordered this van so that we could put the Hall of Scott in. Because I had in my mind that we would be going to, um, you know, abroad or whatever, because I keep getting invited all sorts of places with it. And I thought it'd be really nice to have a van that you can put it inside and bowl along at 70 miles an hour. The van is an X. Special Operations Police Van. So it had loads of stuff inside it, but we didn't have to spend any money. It was mostly taking stuff out. But luckily it's all lined and we had to modify the back and we modified the wheel arches. But you'll see, it's a blooming good thing actually. And it's got a V6 engine and it's automatic. And of course we've now got a cat that was a stray in the field, was a stray in the field and we, get, we fed him and of course now we've got a cat. He was dead worried that I might be doing something and not actually giving him his food. But he's had his food today. So here we go. take the plugs out and we're going to take the oil filter off incidentally we loosened the plugs before we started then we're going to take the filter off and then we're going to press the starter and see if we've got any oil pressure or try and find out what's wrong with it so if you come round here Tanya This, this is the oil filter, and obviously it's a modern oil filter. We didn't want it to look modern, so we, we did this look. We made this old brass thing, and we put it over the top of the oil filter. So there's the oil filter. No. I think we can safely say that the oil pump is not going round. We had this trouble once before and we fixed it. We fixed it so good, I can't believe it could have gone wrong, but it's so it's obviously gone wrong. So we will now take the radiator off and we'll get down to the dry sump and obviously try and find out what's wrong with it. So put that back, stop it getting dirt in there. Put the plugs back in so we don't lose them. Do we go inside the wall this way? Yeah.
Right. This is dry sump pump. This engine didn't have dry sump, but unfortunately with an aeroplane engine it's got such a deep sump. Well, I'll go around, I've got a spare in here, so I'll go around and show you just how deep it is. So I had to cut the sump off, make a panel, screw it on. In fact, I've got a photograph of it somewhere, so Tanya might be able to put that on it. But anyway, so that's why it's dry sump, because obviously it was never meant to go in a car. Um, and this dry sump pump is just a modern, well, fairly modern, probably 60s dry sump pump. So that's what John's disconnecting now. So now I'll walk around and I'll show you the spare engine and you'll see just how deep the sump is. It will be dragging on the floor. So this is a spare engine which we bought in America. Um, we needed a few parts and uh, we couldn't get the parts. We needed some rockers. But the man in America said, oh, I can get you a whole engine. And it was so reasonably priced that we bought the whole engine. But this is what we come to see here. You can see the sump is so low that if that was in the car, it would be dragging on the floor. So I cut it off about there. And that is why we had to fit a dry sump pump. And I'm beginning to think that what's happened with our car is that the dry sump pump, the drive, has stopped driving, which surprises me. Because it did that once before. And we made such a good job of it, I can't believe that it's, it's gone wrong. But anyway, we'll see, won't we? I think there's even a jiggle dead it out, but you can do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's tight, John, isn't it? Yeah, they're, all, they're not really tight, but they are. I think this is probably the best cool. bit of material. Yeah. Yeah, what we've done, we welded it on. But obviously not good enough. Slight, uh, a slight problem. That's it, when we welded that, I thought, well, that can't possibly come undone. I wonder how long it, I, well, I, mean, I always look at your pressure, but, you know, it might have been the, you know, falling off that in that, looking out for that rather than looking at the gauges if you know what I mean. Hopefully we ain't done any damage. Do that, that would, that would actually tap it, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's 
And we get sick. This is baby. That's I think we just got to be rough and get it to bits because you can't take it to bits nicely, can you? Yeah. As a result. Alright, here we go. We've got rotation. But you ain't got any rotation on that one now, have you? I wonder if you can give that a pop, see if that's not that. Did it not make gear or would it just bind on the keyway? No, I don't do that, I don't think. I can't remember, you know. That's the one it sees, to look. Oh, mm. I reckon a bit of heat, you know. Might just free that off. Try it, can't we? Yeah. I ain't lose, have we? Luckily, we've got a spare one. I think it must have something in it itself. I don't think it sees. I mean, I know it sees, but I think it's got something in there that's made it do that. What we do, we'll cut the oil filter to bits, and if there's anything in the oil filter, then we're going to know if we've done any damage. A split pin. Now where does that come from? That just shows you how careful you have to be when you're building an engine. Yeah, but that ain't, if you look at that, that's, that's the, um, the loop part of it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, that's what it's caught on something and broke off properly. Yeah. Because it's got to go through the filter, isn't it? I think it's shared the I'm doing that job. Mm. Well that's the second time I've had that happen in my life, but the first time I was nothing to do with it. It was a spring washer stopped the pump there. 
But, I mean, we built this engine, so either that's broken off somewhere or we dropped a ghoulie. Yeah. I can't believe we were. We're very worried. careful when we're cutting split pins. Yeah, we always cut them and throw them in the bin, don't we? We make sure. Yeah. No, that's come off. Did we? We must have. The big ends are all split pins. Yeah. Yeah, the big ends are split pins. Right, this is it folks, if this is covered in white metal, then we got a problem. And it isn't, I don't think. Oh, that's how carefully we put the edges together, look, there's no dirt in it even. I'd oh, say so it's pretty good, wouldn't you? No, I'd say it's pretty good. You know, there's Tiny and that was just like a bandsaw probably done that. They've all always got a few bits. Nothing really though, there's no. No. I think we can take a chance, rebuild the pump, put it back and see how it goes. Now, now the big thing is, what did I do with the spare one? Because I've got so much stuff. I know I put it somewhere safe, but that's terrible with me. Safe means we'll never find it. I've got an Amiga watch I put somewhere safe and I can't find that. Well, we've managed to take it to pieces and put it back together again. We found the original, the, the spare pump, but as it happens, there was no damage whatsoever, so we were very lucky. It's obvious that the way... didn't do any damage at all, but what happened was that screws on to that shaft and originally when it went wrong the last time we just welded it round in there which is what we're going to do again because it worked beautifully it obviously sheared it and stopped it all really getting damaged because the pump feels good. I mean, it's a bit tight, but it, it's not really. It's lovely. So we're gonna, so we're gonna weld in there. We just mid weld that in there, and and that's it. We put it back. And the problem was, was that. Now, obviously, we might have a serious problem, but there's no point in getting keyed up at this stage. What we're going to do, we're going to put the pump back, put a new filter on, start it up, run it for a little while. Obviously, if it sounds all right, then we're going to take the filter off and have a look at it, and if there's nothing in it, we're going to take a gamble, and hopefully it'll be all right. But I've got no answer to that whatsoever. Somehow or other, that's got in the sump, gone down the pump to go back to the tank. It never got to the tank, it went into the pump and stopped the pump dead. Sheared that piece of weld that was in there, which was luck, and, uh, and that's it. Didn't do any damage to the pump at all. 
But whether we've done any damage inside the engine in the fact that I drove it very carefully, but we'll see, we'll see. But before the end of the day, hopefully, we'll be able to see whether we've done any damage. Coming up to lunchtime, next half an hour we'll have the pump on. After lunch we'll stick the rag back, fill it up with water and give it a try. Check Lamb and Burton's oil can. That's it, we're getting started. No, it could be out of line a bit. Just a little bit though. Cylinder that went out. But that was a cylinder that we can whip that plug out, whip that plug out, and have a look. I don't think I think we mixed them up, so I can't see how. Mm, that might be just about it's struggling, isn't it?
just tried it out, as you can see. You saw me drive up and down in it. It was off on a cylinder, but we cured that. But I've got halfway up the field, no oil pressure. So it's either, it's only, it's, it's either found the other half of the split pin, or we obviously didn't get the drive as good as we should have done. But I can't imagine we didn't, but anyway. So it's typical old cars, you know, you have to just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. We started it up, lovely oil pressure, drove it down the field and back. There's an off on the plug, we changed the plug, I drove it down again, oil pressure, nothing. So as I have found the last half of that split pin, or when we made the drive and we mixed it up, something's gone wrong there. But I don't know what's wrong, so we've got it in bits again, so we're know in about half an hour. Bit of a nuisance really, I'm beginning to think we're losing our touch, but hopefully we'll uh, sort it out. Last Friday I went to a car meeting and I went in the Hall of Scott and it went very nicely. When I got there, I noticed it got no oil pressure, which gave me a bit of a shock. But anyway, luckily somebody lived just down the road, so I carefully drove it down the road and left it overnight and picked it up the next day. Anyway, we took it to bits and we found a dry sump pump got a split pin stuck in there which caused the thing to seize. Luckily the drive which we sort of not made a particularly strong job of thank god stripped and obviously didn't do any damage but we don't leave split pins in engines so if there's a split pin in there there's something gone wrong inside. So it's a bit of aggravation, but we thought, well, there's no point in us curing this and then something's gone wrong inside the engine, so we must have a look. So we've now going to put this back together again, because there's nothing wrong with it. Luckily, it didn't do any damage. And we've actually got a spare anyway, but we didn't need it. So the next thing is to take the whole thing to bits, which is what John's doing now. We've had a clear up in the workshop, moved all the socks and stuff out of the way, and we're going to tear the hall of stock to bits and have a good look at it to see what's gone wrong. Because if that split pin is floating around the engine, there's something gone wrong. Because, you know, we're so careful with split pins. When we cut them off, one, two, put it in the bin. One, you know, we don't make a mistake like that. So anyway, that's what we're going to do now. So Tanya's going to take some pictures now and again of us taking the engine out.
today for a reason. I don't need it. This is an unbelievable coincidence. Six years ago, when this young lady worked for me for a little while, I said to her, find some rockers for my Hall of Scott. Anyway, she put an advert in Barnstormers because she's very good on the computer. And we sent her some money to um, New Mexico and we didn't get anything back. We lost some money. But she rung the magazine and said, look, you know, it's not your fault, but we had this bloke and he was obviously a crook. So they said, what do you want? So she said, well, we're looking for some rockers. Oh, they said, you want to speak to Spike? So anyway, she got on to Spike, and Spike said, oh, I can't find any rockers. He said, but I've got a whole engine you can buy. Anyway, we managed to buy the whole engine for $5,000, which is very, very cheap. And it was all because of Amelia. But Amelia has not been here for years, and she comes the day when we're taking it to pieces to get the spare part out that we need for the other engine. It's like I knew. Like she knew. <laughs> it's amazing. And in the meantime, of course, she's got to move up to... Barnsley. Barnsley. She's met a bloke. She's getting married. So her life's changed. She was 21 when she came here. And she's 27 now. Yep. And uh, there we are, you know. So I thought, I thought, seeing as it was such a coincidence, it was worth making a little film of it. <laughs> anyway, we found a problem with the Hall of Scott, but we're going to that later because it's quite a complicated problem. But we didn't make any mistakes. It's just something that's gone wrong, you know. So we'll talk about that later.